morning. Welcome to Lakeview Lutheran Church. Just a couple of announcements. Um, we are continuing, although the church is closed, we are continuing to offer our Monday evening food pantry. It's a drive-through pantry, and people are being served from 4.30 to 6.30. Nobody needs to get out of their car. At this time, the blood drive continues to be scheduled for April 14th. We, I would encourage you to um, look at the Lakeview Facebook page for a variety of messages and conversations at this time when we can't gather in person. Also a reminder that we provide weekly Zoom meetings that you were invited to attend every Wednesday at noon. Um, you need to download the Zoom app and then follow the guidelines to join us, but everybody's welcome to do that. And finally, a thank you to Terry Warnke, who's um, recording, editing, and producing this uh, video message, and to Lynn Najem, who will be providing music for us today. Well, this is the weekend that the church calls the Passion of Christ. And I'm 63 years old. I know that's hard to believe, but I am. I'm 63 years old, and I have never, ever missed a worship service on this weekend. Never. So this is a rather strange thing today. It's totally out of the ordinary as I sit here in this big empty room with just Lynn and Terry. But as Gail Langer recently posted on our Facebook page, this is a time when we learn what the church really is. And we've always known that the church is people. It's not a building. The church is not brick and mortar. And Lakeview, like many other congregations throughout the world, is learning to how to be the church um, and remain a community without the opportunity of participating in mass worships. For example, we served 30 households in that food pantry last week. So I encourage you today to continue to support Lakeview with your gifts um, as you are able to do that. I encourage you to continue to support the food pantry with gifts of money because at this time they can't receive in-kind gifts that have come from people's homes. And I also con continue to encourage you to keep the staff and the council of this congregation in your prayers as they attempt to work and to lead this congregation during a very unprecedented time. And importantly, please continue to use social distancing and hand washing on behalf of yourself and on behalf of others. We want you to be safe and we want to lower that bell curve. The passion of Jesus, or the passion of Christ, is that short final portion of his life between his last visit in Jerusalem and his crucifixion and burial in a tomb. So today, as Lutherans, we begin that celebration with Jesus coming into the city of Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. People are lining the streets, they're throwing their coats along the way, they're waving palm branches and olive branches. There's turmoil in the city, but there's also excitement as the crowd is now shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus' Jewish tradition, he gathered with his friends to celebrate the feast of the Passover. 
This celebration recalled how God used Moses to lead the Israelites out of slavery that they were inbound, bound in in Egypt. Passover recalls that the people sacrificed an unblemished lamb and then they spread the blood over the top of their doors so that the angel of death would pass over their homes. Jesus is now our unblemished Passover land, lamb. It is because of the blood of Jesus that God will pass over our sins and will love us beyond measure. Now at the Passover meal, Jesus identified that Judas would betray him. While they were eating the dinner, Jesus took a loaf of bread and blessed it. He broke it and then he gave it to his friends saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. It was at this final Passover meal that Jesus gave us the gift of Holy Communion. When we share this meal, we remember that Jesus is still with us, that he forgives our sins, and that he offers to join us in eternity someday. As we stay in our homes during this time, we long to share this meal with each other. We, share, we can share the words easily through these videotapes, the airwaves, and over satellites. But we're, in, we're not able to send that bread and wine through the airwaves and satellites as we can the word. So we're in a time of fasting. We can remember that one of the disciplines of Lent is fasting, along with almsgiving and prayer and devotion. And eventually this fast will come to an end, and we will gather in this room as a community, and we will have one giant feast of bread and of wine. Look forward to that day. The next part of his journey is familiar. Jesus went out to a place called Golgotha, Gethsemane, to pray. He asked God, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus knows that God has a purpose for him, and that even if it isn't what he wants, he will be obedient to God. It is in this garden of Gethsemane that Jesus is arrested and taken before the high priests, the scribes, and the elders.
Now the story turns grim. There is denial of friendship. There is mocking and there is beating. There is questioning of Jesus' identity. There is, is his trial before Pilate and the governor. There is the release of Barabbas, and there is the call to crucify Jesus. Jesus is flogged. They twisted some thorns into a crown, and they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and then they knelt before him and mockingly said, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they led Jesus to Golgotha the place of the skull. There they hung him on a cross to die. They put a sign over his head that read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Darkness came over the land. Jesus called out, asking why God had abandoned him. Then Jesus breathed his last breath. The earth shook and the rocks split. Jesus died on that cross. After Jesus' death, a Roman guard, a centurion, the enemy, so to speak, gave a testimony when he said these words, truly this man was God's son. Even those who doubted had faith. 
Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body, wrapped it in linen cloths, and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. A stone was moved before the opening to secure it. Guards were placed there. They were placed there to prevent anyone from stealing the body of Jesus. The passion of Jesus was a very difficult and turbulent time. There was fear, denial, torture, isolation, ridicule, anger, sadness, a change in daily living, and there was death. It would appear that Jesus' friends and followers were going through similar unknown experiences and emotions as we are going through in our world right now. This COVID-19 pandemic has brought fear and denial and torture, isolation, ridicule, anger, sadness, a change of our daily living patterns, and unfortunately, far too much death. This is not easy and it's not comfortable for any of us, and we're frustrated as we try to live in ways that lower that bell curve. We're bored and we're frustrated. Everything in our world has been turned upside down. Some of us are struggling with our physical health, and many of us are struggling with our mental and emotional health. Some of us are struggling with the loss of employment, and others are struggling with unknown financial situations. Like Jesus' disciples, when they sealed the tomb, we live in the unknown, and that's always frightening. As we watch the news each day, we realize that we don't know what will happen next. We know that the disciples isolated themselves out of fear. We too are isolating ourselves out of fear. But we have to try and stay focused on the rest of the story. The passion of Jesus is over, but the story is not. You all know that next weekend there will be a resurrection. And in this unchartered time in our world and in our nation, we're invited to hold on to that Easter event. The passion ends. The torture and the terror, the fear and the anxiety and the death ends. There is a new day. We hold on to the hope that a new day in our world will also come. A fresh day, a resurrection, a rebirth. Stay focused, my friends. We isolate and we stay away from friends and family and from our own church community. We do that out of love for others. And it will end.
Let us pray. Gracious God, it is good for us to gather as your beloved in community. We treasure your presence with us in word and meal, song and prayer. Be with us in these days when gathering together as often as we would like is not possible. When we must be apart for reasons of safety, we trust that you surround us with your sheltering wings. Encourage us in connecting as we are able, reaching out to our neighbors in need and being persistent in our prayers. Bring hope and healing and safety to our hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, and jail cells. Protect healthcare providers and emergency responders. Bring knowledge and wisdom to all healthcare organizations, including organizations like the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization. Continue to give the gifts of discovery to medical researchers and scientists. Calm our children and their anxious parents and caregivers during school closures. Give guidance to school administrators, teachers, and staff as they figure out how to teach remotely and under duress. Come to workplaces and to those workers who are anxious about safety and uncertainty. Calm those who are laid off and struggling to provide for their families. Give encouragement to those who must work from home. Be with government institutions and municipal agencies as they make decisions for our communities. Help us to cope and to abide by those decisions. Keep our Lakeview Food Pantry volunteers safe. Use each of us to comfort anyone who grieves today. Bring your healing touch to all those whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, our constant companion. Amen. Please join me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.